What's going on guys? I'm Lucky Aces and today I'm going to show you how I put these 12 inch ape hangers on my 2008 Honda Shadow 750. So I actually put these on a couple months ago, so just pretend they're the stock bars. It's the same process. Alright, first things first, we're going to need a couple things. One, we're going to need a towel, the Allen wrenches, Phillips screwdriver, as well as a flathead screwdriver. I'm using one with, you know, these multi-tips. Tape measure, utility knife, WD-40, and a drill with a half inch drill bit. And I forgot, we need a box end wrench to take our mirrors off. All right, step one, take our box end wrench. We're gonna remove these mirrors. And then we're gonna take our towel, cover our tank. All right, once our tank's covered, we can take these levers off. And that's gonna be a five millimeter Allen key. Be careful with these electrical connections. And set her out of the way. Make sure you keep track of all your hardware. We'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, once our levers are safely out of the way, we can take off these controls. That's gonna be a number two Phillips. Throttle tube here with the factory cables is just long enough to reach. So we're going to, we're keeping the factory throttle cables, the factory electrical on both sides. The only thing I had to replace was the clutch cable, but we'll get into that. Slide that off. Make sure we save our hardware. When you're tightening these back in, guys, don't go nuts. Because these housings are made out of aluminum. The last thing you want to do is strip these out. Nice and snug. Hang them out the way. And same thing on the other side. And check this out guys, we barely even started and we're almost halfway done. All right, now that we got all the controls off, now it's time to remove this left grip. Now, if we didn't want to preserve it, you could take that razor knife, cut a little slit, peel it off, and move on with your life. However, I decided to keep the factory Honda grips. So we're gonna need flathead screwdriver and our WD-40. All right, so you take your flathead screwdriver, stick it between the grip and the bar, and you take your WD-40, and you just shoot a little in there, come around the other side, Add a little more WD-40, two or three spots, and then just start working that grip back and forth. And now I'm not going to take this off because I'm not changing, <laughs> I'm not actually changing these bars out. All right, then once you get enough WD-40 in there, it's going to start eating away at that glue, and you can actually just keep wiggling, 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 and that grip will slide off. And then don't forget your bushing, too. Go ahead and take that guy off. All right, so at this point in time, you should just have your bare bars, grips, controls are removed. So now it's time to actually remove the bars. And again, I'm not actually going to take these off because... I already had the apes installed. Just pretend these are the factory bars. Process is the same. All right, so we're gonna take our utility knife, or you can use a small precision screwdriver if you happen to have one. And we're gonna very, very carefully remove these four caps on the risers. So I don't know how, I don't know how well you can see that. Might need a tiny bit more blade. Nope, and don't poke yourself like I did. Just kind of work it under the cap. Boom, pop them off. Then what I like to do is I like to take these and immediately put them in my pocket so they don't get lost. And of course the next step is going to be removing these four Allen bolts. You're going to need a six millimeter Allen key. If you have one on a socket, that would probably be ideal because if I remember correctly, I had to actually <laughs> use an extra little piece of pipe as a little breaker bar since I only had these little stubby guys. Again, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Loosen every single one of those up. Again, I'm not going to actually do it because I'm not actually taking these bars off and I don't want to recenter them. But once you have all four bolts and the risers, and if you notice, there's a little dot on the risers here, that indicates the forward position. I don't know how important that is as far as getting things lined up. I don't know what happens if you have them backwards. But just remember these little dots, front of the bike. So once you have these off, take off your old bars, set them aside, throw them in the trash, whatever you want to do with them. Let me take our new ape hangers. Set them in your risers. They'd probably, you know, I'd angle them down towards the tank because we got the towel protecting it. Put your risers back in and just snug these bolts up. But leave them snug to where you can still rotate them. So the next step, you're going to want to be on the bike. And what we're going to do is we're going to rotate these bars forward and backwards till we find a spot where they're comfortable for us. So for me, what I found is slightly forward helps keep my back just a little bit straighter. 
and just, you know, just where it feels pretty good. You know, you don't want your arms, you know, super, super stretched. You want to have just a slight bend in your elbow because you got to remember you're going to have to turn. And then once you get them where you want them, you take our tape measure. And we want to make sure these things are absolutely centered. So right now we are looking at what's the distance between... Distance between the checker pattern on here is two inches. And there is right about half an inch from the interior of the checker here to my riser. But we also want to verify that the distance from our riser to the end of our bar is the same on each side. That's about, what is that, 17 5 eighths. We do the same thing on the other side. That's about 17 and 17 and 5 eighths. So we're good. All right, once your bars are nice and square and aligned where you want them, take your six millimeter Allen, tighten these guys down, and do top left, bottom right, top right, bottom left. And remember guys, if that little dot's not facing forward, you got your risers flipped around, you need to get them oriented in the right direction. All right, so now the fun part. Now we can put it all back together. All right guys, so the first thing we need to address is gonna be this brake line. Now we don't need to remove it. We don't need to unhook it, bleed brakes, any of that other stuff. It is long enough the way it sits on the bike, but it is stretched a little bit. So what you're gonna need to do is I notice there's a lot of extra slack down here. So in this bracket right here, essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this bolt off right here and pardon me, I don't remember what it is. I think it's like a 15 mil. And that's gonna let you pop this bracket off. Then what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to slide the brake line up. Now, typically this bracket is right here at the top of this little outer rubber sheathing. So you're just gonna wanna shimmy that brake up, brake line up about an inch or two, and then it won't give you any problems. All right, we're gonna start putting stuff back together. We're gonna start with the throttle side. And I don't know how well you guys can see this, but there's a little, there's a little pin in there, or like a little nub. And what that does, that lines up with a hole here on the bars, and it's kind of like an anti-rotation thing. Now, the hole on these bars, and these are 12-inch apes, these are the wide versions from J&P Cycles, and I'm going to link this stuff down below, guys. The hole is not quite in the right spot, so we need to make it bigger. It's actually a little closer to the end of the bar. We actually need it over just probably half an inch, if I remember correctly. So I take my half-inch drill bit, and essentially I just put it in there, Okay, well, I'm not gonna do that again. Let's put it in there and just kept a waller and hole out. Just back and forth and just widen it out. You might be able to use a uh, unibit. This is kind of what I had. And it did the trick. So then we'll take our Phillips screwdriver. Go ahead and loosen these screws. Pop the clamshell open like that. And guys, these are the factory throttle cables and these 12 inch wide apes just barely reach, man. I was very pleased actually. <laughs> All right, so the controls on the right side are back together. Just need to make sure that little detents in that hole, it's not going anywhere. We'll put these screws back in. And remember, these are steel screws screwed into an aluminum housing, so don't go nuts. We don't need to super tighten them. We just need them nice and snug and make sure they're not going anywhere. So the electrical is long enough. You probably just have to pull just a little bit more out of the headlight bucket, and I think that's about as max as we can get. And then what I did previously is I just put two little zip ties right there just to kind of clean it up a little bit. Put one right there. I'm going to leave them a little loose till I get them where I want them. Which I'm just doing this mainly so it's just not flapping in the breeze. I think it looks a little better instead of having it just come up. Snug them just like that. All right, so over here on the left side of the bike, to put the grip on the new bars, I basically did the same thing as taking it off. I just kind of put a little bit of WD-40 on the inside and then just kind of worked it on. Gave her a couple taps, make sure she's nice and seated. And once that uh, WD-40 evaporates or dries or whatever the heck it does, I mean, that grip's solid. It's not going anywhere. But make sure you put this bushing on first. It needs to be oriented in the correct direction, too, with the beveled end facing the center of the bike. So then once your grip's on, we do the same thing we did on the other side. And we can put our controls on. So we take our Phillips screwdriver, run these screws out. Again, same clamshell design. 
I had to do the same thing on this side with the hole. Just basically take the drill, wall it out a little bit. These guys here, there's a little lip on the inside here. That's where that bushing is going to sit. Just kind of clip it in just like so. Hold it together. The longer screw goes here in the back, I believe. The smaller screw goes in the front. And torque them down. Same thing, guys. Remember, these housings are aluminum, so we don't want to go crazy torquing these things. We just need them snugged or they're not going to move. All right, back up here on the right side of the bike. Now we can put our lever back on, our brake reservoir, the whole thing. And we're going to need our 5mm Allen key. The important thing to notice, guys, on these is if you notice, it says up. So obviously we want it facing up. I don't know if it makes a difference, but Honda decided that, hey, that needed to be there. So we're going to put it back the way it came. Take these two guys out right here. Slide that on the bar like so. Now there's no retaining pin or anything on these, so I'm just gonna have to leave them a little loose and then we'll adjust where we want them. And if that sentence didn't make sense, it will here in a moment. So same thing, we put these guys in. Don't want to monster torque them down. We just need them nice and snug. Now, hop back on the bike. And actually, that's actually in a really good spot. You want to make sure it's comfortable to reach. And if it's not, you do have a little bit of rotation. Not much here because you're going to bump into the throttle cables. I found that right about there, if I leave about, what is that, a half inch gap or so underneath the throttle cables, that's a pretty comfortable position. So once you get it where you want it, tighten them down. And don't forget to plug your uh, brake light switch back in. Now this is just a, uh, it's just a normally open switch. So it doesn't matter which side these go back on. Just make sure they seat like they're supposed to. That one did not, so we'll do it again. There we go. All right, let's go to the other side. All right, so just like on the right side of the bike, there is an arrow pointed up. So we just need to make sure everything gets oriented the way it was. Let's back these bolts out. Yeah, because if you notice, there's a lot more slack in this clutch cable than there is the throttle cable. I tried rerouting the factory cable, and it just barely didn't reach. So if you go with 10s, I think 10-inch mini apes, I think that'd still look good, be a nice little compromise if you didn't want to play with cables. All right, so we snug them down like we did on the other side, leave them just a little loose. All right, so we hop on the bike. Kind of get it rotated where we wanted. I think that feels pretty good. And we snug her down. And I just noticed we skip a step. If we reach into our pocket, pull these little caps, we can just pop them right back on these bolts here. Which obviously these don't have any function. They're just kind of to pretty the bike up a little bit. Make sure we plug in on the clutch side. And guys, we're almost done. So all that's left, other than trimming these zip ties, put our mirrors back on. Now what I do is I line those parallel with the bars, but you may have to adjust them. Line parallel with the bars, tighten the jam nut. If we have to, we can tweak it later. All right, guys, that's it. We did it. And honestly, it didn't take very long. If you're not messing with the throttle cable, the clutch cable, brake line, or any of the electrical, you can swap these out in under an hour. I mean, I've only been recording for 49 minutes. So hopefully this helps some of you guys out. If you think I did a good job, please do me a favor, subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll catch you guys next time. See you.